great. Now what? Hey guys, so today I have Rhiannon back, the awesome tarot card reader that I had on recently. And today she's going to do just like a little mini tarot card reading course and teach me some tips and hopefully you guys will learn some tips too. Also this will give you a taste of her online course which she will begin to teach online over Zoom. So let's welcome back Rhiannon. Hey Rhiannon. Hey, hi guys. How are you? I'm awesome. It is so moon and Pisces right now. It's so like fuzzy and out there and I, I love it. I'm a Pisces, so oh. this is my time. You're a Pisces, like my sister. That's why I like you so much. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know anything about astrology. I would love to study it though. It's, it's really interesting. Yeah, it's so in depth. Like you could learn forever. There's a, it's like a whole science. Totally, yeah. totally. And I guess tarot's kind of like that too like it's a science that you can get really in depth with but you can also be really simple which is how i start all of my classes with all of my students i keep it really simple in the beginning i don't know how much experience you have with reading tarot very little <laughs> i watched a few youtube videos i have a book that i kind of tried to read but it just kind of went over my head yeah i just kind of like memorized all the meanings of every card but find like my intuition would read the cards better so i was really practicing a lot for a while and getting really good and then i got lazy and i stopped and i kind of lost my power so but before we proceed i just wanted to give you a little update from your reading it's really really funny so rhiannon pulled two cards that she felt said that I was going to get an animal or a pet or maybe a dog. And <laughs> like I said, we're not allowed to have dogs in this home. So I was like, I don't know how a pet's gonna come into my life. But uh, yesterday we went to the local trail and oh my God, I had no idea, but it is like infested with bunnies, <laughs> okay? like. <laughs> with the cutest fluffiest little bunnies and they're just like everywhere like you pull into the parking lot and they're there and then you walk towards uh, the trail and there's like this opening and they're like everywhere so <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys um, my attempt to try and pet some of these rabbits it's pretty ridiculous my boyfriend was filming me and I'm just like running around with like spinach leaves trying to <laughs> get these bunnies to play with me and they're just so afraid but I'm gonna do it I'm gonna catch those bunnies so I think that's what you're seeing because I'm gonna go to this freaking trail as much as I can to hang out with the bunnies I am like so excited about these bunnies I'm seeing you like just sitting on a tree and like all these bunnies are all over you because you have carrots and stuff and they just love you yes I'm oh so my god happy. they're adorable do you every time you pull a card with an animal does it always feel like that's what's happening for the person or their time no. No, actually only occasionally. If I notice a pattern with people, like more than one animal coming up, but a lot of times it's just something that will pop into my head for you. I don't know, it's just oh, cool. how, it's a different way of relating with the cards with everyone I read for. I love that, well, that's even more meaningful then. Horrible, I love it. So, what, should, what are we going to do today? Okay, so, I have my deck. I don't know if you brought yours or not. Yeah, give me a second. I'll go grab. This is the Kyle Gray Angel and Ancestors. Oh, okay. Oh, how yeah. beautiful. And I like it because the girl on the cover looks like me. I was thinking that. Yeah. <laughs> she really does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you can use any tarot deck that speaks to you. And what I find is like, after a while you build a relationship, if you don't hit it off with the cards right away, Sometimes that just means you need more time with them. And other times I do think like it's just not the right fit. You were absolutely 100% right when you said that you're, you found that your intuition was right on with the cards. That's how I teach. With the book, if you're memorizing all of the meanings, you're building a crutch for yourself and you'll always want to go back to that. And it takes a long, long time to get away from it if that's the habit that you started with. So I like to teach people right off the bat to get away from the book. I think it's fine for occasionally referencing things if you get really stuck, but I really feel that the best way to do it is mostly intuitively 
and of course working with the different symbols and stuff and patterns but really the book is kind of a last resort that's how i learned i really spent a lot of times memorizing the meanings and constantly looking up different definitions and all this stuff and then of course once smartphones came out it was like so easy to just go for the definition but it kept me trapped and if i could go back i would start right away with my intuition first and then kind of looking up the meanings only if i got really stuck well that is awesome like uh, two of my other girlfriends got the Osho deck. Every now and then we'd get together and we would take turns. Somebody would have a question. We, we always said whatever the meaning is, it, it belongs to the reader. Mm -hmm. So like my interpretation will be different than, than yours. So I always encourage the girls, whatever you're feeling is what the real meaning is. I know the reader has a, a big part to do with the reading, not just the cards. They're just a tool, right? They're a guide. Yeah, absolutely. You can really read anything. It's why people can read palms, you can read water, you can read the patterns on a leather couch. Like it really doesn't matter what it is. It's all about how your subconscious mind interprets what's in front of you. Your subconscious mind knows everything. Everything from the minute you were born, it's been on record. It's got all this information stored up. And when you look at something and you're reading it, you're telling the story that your subconscious mind is putting in front of you. Like it's giving you all of this stuff to notice and you're connected with the person that you're reading for. So you're just telling a story based on like what you are noticing, based on what the subconscious mind is giving you. So really you can totally just read whatever it is that you want. We have intuition because we're reading people's faces. We're even reading like the weather just slightly changed, like the tone of everything just went down, reading the energy. So it's less about the cards and more about your sensitivity to what's in front of you. And the sensitivity really is all about getting out of your own way. The minute that you start to think should I say that? Is this right? I don't know if I should say it because I don't want to hurt this person's feelings or I'm probably not a good enough reader to say these things. Like that's what gets in the way is the doubt. Your job when you're sitting in front of someone and even when you're reading for yourself is just to let whatever comes through, come through without a filter. So if you suddenly think of your uncle, like that's the thing to mention and you might not want to say well my uncle but you might want to say what reminds you of your uncle your uncle was is a recovering alcoholic mm. you might have a recovering alcoholic in your life but yeah the mind knows the higher universal mind knows and it's just tapping into that that's why i put him in the last video why that i can only really do a good job reading the cards when i've had a couple glasses of wine because i just say whatever i'm seeing and feeling i have no filter whereas if i hadn't had a glass of wine i would probably be more reserved and like you said, I would question the things that were coming to me. But like you said, also, it acts as a doorway. Totally. And I have a trick for that, too. It's really all about getting out of your analytical mind. And the way that I find works for me and how I teach is for people to tune in with their heart and connect heart to heart with the person in front of them or with yourself if you're reading for yourself but really it's all about love and wanting to be of assistance so when i read for you how i can get an accurate clear reading is just by intending to help you i just want to connect with you and be of assistance in any way that i can and i actually will ask whatever you want to believe in but i i say god be in me speak through me let me help kimmy let me be clear and specific and then that sets the tone for the reading and moves me out of the way wow yeah that's that's awesome that all makes so much sense i love it i love it yeah it's important it's important to get out of the way we can start with the actual cards if you want if you yep. want to just hit three cards just at random from your deck okay First card was the moon card. Pretty. Yeah. That's beautiful, yeah. Second card I got was the she-wolf, unleash the wild within. Another moon, okay. And the last card is Shaolin Master, be graceful in movement and Oh, action. nice. Yeah. 
Okay. So if you are looking at all three of those, what is the very first thing that you notice? This is reading for you, by the way. We'll just make this I yourself. Read. Okay. So the moon was a take note of intuitive messages. But when I first saw the moon, I thought of like cycles and change. Well, the she-wolf feels like letting go of all your inhibitions, speaking your mind and do whatever feels right. But then the shallow master is almost contradicting. It makes me feel like I have to be really calm and careful with my uh, actions. Being graceful and just thoughtful about what I'm doing. So that's what I'm mm -hmm. feeling. Yeah. Okay, all right, that's awesome. So if you put those together into a story, uh -huh. it would really be talking about cycles and changes and being really uninhibited and speaking your mind with this mastery. So kind of like a combination of letting it all out and just speaking your truth, but at a mastery level yeah. and really putting your words into manifestation. That's what it reminds me of, like manifesting with your words, but also mastering communication. Oh, yeah. Wow. That just gave me goosebumps. Yeah. You, you are so good at interpreting that. That's so mm, full of wisdom. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, but you, you you totally can do that too. It's all, see now it's all about like you have the patterns and if you can notice sort of what links the cards together, yeah. when you're reading and you go back to a book or you do an internet search, you only get the meaning of each individual card. Right. Almost nobody reads that way. Like when I do readings, I pull like almost every card in the deck. Like I just have a ton of cards and then it becomes like making a sentence uh -huh. out of those cards. Yeah. So let's pull three more and do me now. Okay. <laughs> I so, need this is another thing that I teach people. You should start reading for people immediately. Like get your deck in the mail or whatever it is and literally start reading for others as soon as you get it because you wanna get practiced with that. Otherwise you become a really kind of shut down in yourself and you get scared to, to share that with others. So yeah, I lost my momentum. I was doing them daily and just sending random people in my life like, these are your daily three cards. And they'd be like, oh, I love it, so great. But uh, I lost my momentum, so <laughs> I got to start again for sure. Okay, three cards for you. Okay, so I have the Shaman card mm -hmm. and Trust in Higher Forces. Second card is Autumn, Release the Old and Rest. And Great Teacher, Learn from Spiritual Experiences. Oh my god, okay, all of these cards feel so you, like, I feel the wisdom from the Shaman card. That's what you do when you read, you surrender to the higher forces and you channel wisdom. Release the old and rest, great teacher. Okay, so how do these all come together? Oh, it feels like, it feels like you need to let go of some old things that you've been working on or dealing with and blossoming into this great teacher and teaching your spiritual gifts. Yeah, what do you think? Yes. Yeah, and that's literally as easy as it is. And the less that you refer to the book, the better you'll get at interpreting it yourself. Right. If you look at those cards, do you see any reoccurring symbols? Yes, yeah. oh my god. Wow, so crazy. Every single one has birds. Okay. Weird. Yeah, so this one has the owl, this one has like the crow, and then this one has the dove. I know. Yeah, I mean, birds represent freedom to me, taking flight, new, new projects you know, just soaring and, you know, taking taking off on new projects and things. So that's yeah. very exciting for you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Sure. It's so interesting. So you said to let go of things. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in the middle of a breakup with my fiance. It feels like it's ongoing and I'm trying to like completely let that go. I have a ton of new projects. And the teaching thing really is where I want to focus a lot of my energy. And definitely, like, I never want to read for people. I want something to come through me and read through me. Yes. So it's true with the higher the higher power thing. Yes, I love that. I love that. Yeah, this is, whew, this is so accurate, I feel. Yeah, and oh, yeah. you you noticing the symbols, like, if you keep pulling cards, you will notice more and more that there are symbols that unite all of the cards. Like there's something oh. in small that you can find for colors. Okay. And it's really about getting in touch with what you feel colors mean to you. 
like blue to me is calm and even psychic senses and a lot of emotional stuff but it might mean something totally different to you. It's very individual. I've always, I guess I have more clarity now on when a card shows up upside down. It just, does it just mean like, what does that mean to you? When cards show up upside down, they mean either reversals or blocks with energy. For me, I don't think all cards that are upside down are negative. Like if I pull the devil and he's right side up, he's right side up, he represents being chained to things, obsessions, addictions. And when he's upside down, he represents letting go of those things and not being addicted and choosing to spend your time in spiritual higher thoughts. So cool. it's not necessarily that it's bad or negative, but it is it is about blocked energy and things not flowing the way that the cards do when they're right side up. That makes sense because like I just keep them all so that they turn up right side up because I just got so confused and I kept researching and googling it but I really couldn't quite grasp it. Every time I would turn a card upside down it would be like uh oh <laughs> what does this mean right so I just left them but can I just pull one and just yeah I was just gonna like, say oh. let's or pull one and then let's reverse it and we'll talk about what it can mean when it's okay reversed. so shield maiden make plans and focus yeah so if that was upside down I guess that would be like blocks that are preventing you from making plans and moving forward yeah and from uh, being focused yeah mainly like just you just if you just put blocks in front of it and then it makes sense but yeah it's not black and white like that right like you said if you get the devil card it can mean a good thing yeah and if i don't know if any of those cards are negative right like negative meanings but if they do it can just mean a reversal of energies or any any card that you pull that's reversed is really just a reversal of energies and blocks mm. so a block to obsession and addiction would be not obsessed and not addicted and if you have a reading where there's a lot of reversals you would just tell the person you're really blocked right now you've got a lot going on and your energy isn't flowing and I'll usually like pull cards to help them like, how can you unblock energy? Because I don't want to just read for people and tell them what's going on. That's kind of pointless to me. I want to show them their patterns and get them into a place where they can do something about it. I want to empower them. And you can do the same thing when you're reading for you. Right. Loved how you just turned the card and then you were also telling me that you were sending me all this energy that would, you know, help to reverse blocks that I was having with that upside down card. And yeah, that's, that's way more than any other tarot card reader would do. It, it makes you not just a, a tarot card reader or an intuitive, it makes you a healer. Yeah, I totally heal with, with tarot cards. I believe that they totally can be healing. Um, something that you can do to manifest is actually just use the cards sort of like a vision board in a way, but I actually have a separate deck that I use for manifesting oh. and I'll pull out whatever cards I want to have happen in my life and I'll like light a candle next to them. I might write on an index card exactly what I want. You can carry them around in your pocket. And another really fun thing that you can do just to talk about like manifestation with tarot is you can pull all of the negative cards out and put them aside and turn all the good cards right side up and give yourself a reading with just the positive cards. Yeah. I do that like I'll ask a question. It's sort of cheating in a way but it's placebo it's the placebo effect you're getting it into your mind that this is going to happen i love yeah. that yeah did you uh, ever get to read dr joe's placebo book oh my god amazing yeah i must have read it at least eight times i'm obsessed with dr joe yeah totally obsessed i read that again i only read it once um but yeah it's called you're the placebo and guys you have to read it it is so powerful it, it empowers you oh my god you realize the science you realize you know just on a physical level that your your brain your body can create all the pharmaceutical drugs that you need just by believing in it and feeling it yeah love that book that's incredible yeah if if it makes you feel better to spread the cards in a certain way then that is a placebo effect right yeah totally and something that i have for my kids this is totally off topic but it's so much fun and i tell everybody to do it we use tic tacs and i tell them they cannot have a tic tac unless they have a definite intention and then they take the tic tac and by the time the tic tac is dissolved that intention has started to come true Ooh. so i use the placebo for my kids all the time and it doesn't matter if you know about it which is totally crazy to me if you know it's a placebo or a sugar pill 
That's it doesn't right. make any difference. You still will feel the effects. Yeah, because you believe in it and you feel it and the cards are just a tool to kind of like as a gesture or a ritual that seals it, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Sort of like a like a prayer with props, sort yeah, of. Yeah, like a ceremonial yeah. thing, you know. Sometimes people feel like once they've done some kind of a ceremonial thing with, with objects, sacred objects or whatever, they feel like, okay, it is done. And I guess that's the point you want to get to where it's done, I can release it now, let the magic happen, right? Yeah, totally, exactly. Yeah, I love tarot for manifestation. All right, a couple of other things that you can do to really get into reading. Really, it's all about noticing the expressions on people's faces and the little symbols. There are a lot of interpretations that can be made about the numbers, the colors, the suits, which is the elements, the um, pentacles, cups, all of that. So you can go really in depth, but when you're first starting, you really just want to like take the cards and notice things like, where is his gaze? He's not looking. Like this card, death, not looking. Even this card, I'm trying to find one that is looking, not looking. Oh, she's blindfolded. So somebody who's not looking. Then you have the King of Swords, totally looking straight at you. And what would that mean? That would mean like people who are avoiding, when you're not looking at something, you're not wanting to face it. Mm -hmm. And people who are facing a situation straight on, he is a communicator, he's direct. And when you have more than one card looking away or blindfolded, you could say, oh, they don't want to see something. They're not paying attention, they're looking away. Or they're not seeing something, they're ignorant to something. So little things like that you want to pay attention to. These two cards, not really the greatest feeling cards, like they're kind of cold. You can just feel the emotions. So something that I have everyone do first homework assignment is to actually separate the cards by the base emotions. So you have love, you have fear, you have anger. Those are really the big ones. And write those down on an index card and just separate the cards by how they make you feel. Mm. Mm. I think yeah. that's why I don't really vibe with this deck as much because every card is too beautiful and too magical. And like, I just feel like I need some contrasting cards to mm -hmm. kind of make this more rich and I, yeah and yeah i just feel like all these cards are a little too positive <laughs> you know? yeah i know exactly what you mean and really i mean there is a shadow aspect to our lives and we want to be aware of how we're screwing ourselves over and the patterns that we're stuck in you want to be aware of the shadow so you can bring it to the light and i noticed that a lot of oracle decks especially are like so light filled and yeah. that's it's beautiful but like sometimes i want to know like yeah. where i'm i'm stuck yeah that's yeah that's a really good point I definitely got to search on, for something more balanced you know mm -hmm. yeah. yeah the other thing that you can do you can program your cards to give you yes or no answers Ooh, wow yes so i a lot of times like you'll pull cards people will ask you questions or you'll want to know a yes or no just simply tell me is this a yes or a no yeah. and you'll pull cards but they could mean either or, or you're not really sure yeah. I tell my cards I want you to give me a simple yes or no answer a yes is an upright card and a no isn't is a reverse card and that's as simple as I, I made it for the card. So I communicated with them. I just told them, I kind of um, charged them with that. You have to tell the cards to do that. And you can definitely like talk to them. If you're not clear about something, you can ask them, can you give, tell me what you're trying to say to me? And then just let the messages in. I talk to them all the time like their friends yeah i heard i heard a couple of people say how you have to build a relationship with them and like when you when you first buy them like carry them with you everywhere sleep with them go shopping with them just to have just to meld the energy your personal energy with the energy of the cards but yeah communicating with them i mean they're communicating to you why wouldn't you communicate to them right that makes so much sense 
I love yeah. that. This was all very informative. Thank you so much. Yeah, if you guys are interested in taking one of her online courses, check the link below. Uh, did you want to say anything more about the course? Just that, like, we just barely scratched the surface just to get people started. There is so much, like the Zoom courses, when I spoke with you about how to create the Zoom courses, you said to keep it short, but I could not get it to be any less than five weeks and meeting twice a week because oh. I really want to teach everything I know. My, my idea and my thought is to get people to a level where they could read professionally if they wanted to after only like five or six weeks of practicing with other people and really getting super in depth. So the Zoom course that I want to offer isn't just like Tarot 101. I really want to get people to know the cards. Like I really want to bring them to a level where they feel comfortable actually like almost starting a business on their own. I want to get in depth. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I'm busy, but I might want to take part in this course because it sounds so cool. Yeah, I know you're busy. I know and I want to invite you. So please. But I also have the, the membership site, which is totally different. That is very like, if you just want to read for yourself for fun, or it's very kind of surface and beginner and the zoom classes, I wanted to go really, really in depth. So yeah, okay, well, great. So there you go. If you guys are just a beginner or you want to be more serious about this, she has both options there for you. When do you think you're going to start this course? zoom course my plan is october 1st okay perfect i will remind you guys and let you guys know way ahead of time and they heard the same noise and they were like i know that it was aliens i they hassle with chris pratt and he yeah it sounded like a train going right through me and yeah he got stretched and I felt like I had a metal rod through my whole body. I could feel it.